Hello guys, I recently encountered a tweet by Jeffrey Way and I thought to shoot a video expanding on that. So the idea of Jeffrey is to actively call methods that you want to get executed on your class. In this case, it's an action class, but it also could be a Laravel controller. Here I have opened that up as a zoomed in version. So there's handle method, which actively calls register, check for invitation, login, and stuff like that, which are all protected functions in the same class. So basically you don't have any event listeners, you don't have any background jobs, but you may call them actually inside of those functions actively. So you don't need to look anywhere else to understand what is happening in this handle method. So in this video, I want to show you three more things, which are kind of risky, I would say, or maybe dangerous in Laravel to use because they are kind of hidden from the plain sight when you look at the controller, for example. They would not be obvious to, especially to those developers who are not that familiar with Laravel. They are great Laravel features and I don't discourage to use them, but just you need to get familiar with them and know that they exist. So thing number one is global scopes. This is a great feature that you can create a scope or make it an anonymous global scope, for example, with some condition. So if you want to show only the users, for example, that are ancient, or for example, for multi-tenancy, filter that by active tenant or active team or something like that, you can just add the global scope here in the model. But the problem is that when you run eloquent query from your controller or a job or elsewhere, that query does not contain that where condition, which means that a new developer opening that code wouldn't know that there's another where condition happening under the hood. So they may not understand why they're getting different unexpected results until they actually see there's a global scope on that model. So from controller, they need to switch to model and check for scopes. It got a bit better with a new syntax of scoped by here. So it's more visible now on the model level. So you don't need to scroll down to the actual global scope being activated, but still it's kind of hidden from the plain side if you don't look at the model actively. Again, I'm not saying you should not use global scopes. In some cases they are very beneficial, but you just need to be aware of them every time you use them and consider that some other developers would use that code. Another similar thing is observers. Another eloquent feature, you make an observer class which does something on create it, update it, or something, and then you register that observer in the boot method, for example, of your model. But again, the same story in the controller observer isn't actively seen. So a new developer coming to a controller would run that query and wouldn't even know right away that something else is happening behind the scenes, especially if you're using model methods like creating they are not even in the docs, but you can put creating here to modify the records before they are saved in the database. So again, a developer from a controller needs to go to the model and see if there are any observers. And again, it got better with observed by syntax, similarly to scoped by. So you don't need to at least scroll down to find the observer activated. Great. But still observers is kind of a separate layer that you need to be aware of to not miss the things happening under the hood. Now, before I show the last third feature I wanted to show as kind of a risky, let's get back to Jeffrey's tweet and his message is to have handle method that handles all the required step instead of having a listener class. But that is already a better step with event and listener because you need to actually actively call the event from your controller or in this case from action class. So a new developer opening that class or controller would at least know that there's event and they would figure out that the listener exists. With global scopes or observers, that doesn't really happen. You don't actively call them. So kind of one step towards clarity is to use events and listeners. In some of the situations, obviously, I'm kind of generalizing here. But what Jeffrey is saying that we need to actively code for the current method instead of relying on the magic. And speaking of magic, let's talk about Laravel config. So you can get the values from config app, for example, time zone, and you can get the default. But did you know that you can also set config values on the fly? For example, if we scroll down, we can do config app debug true. 
in whichever place of your Laravel application. And that config value would be active for that particular one request. So I've seen people doing that in the middlewares. And in some cases, it makes perfect sense. You set the config overriding something, you set the session value, for example, for active language or currency or whatever, you set something globally for the rest of the request lifecycle. And similarly, very similarly, a new feature in Laravel, context. This is mostly for debugging, but it's basically the same logic. You set some value globally for other usage somewhere else in your application. But you need to be careful with that. Again, this is hidden from plain sight, so a new developer coming to the team wouldn't know that there's a global middleware resetting or overriding some default values. Again, I'm not saying you should not use those features like setting config. In some cases, it's very valuable and beneficial, but you need to inform your teammates in some form, maybe through the comments or documentation or onboarding or stuff like that, so they would know what is happening in such hidden way behind the scenes or just generally hire developers who would know where to check and would expect something global in observers or middleware or config. What do you think about these three global scopes, observers and middleware setting config? Am I overly cautious here? Maybe I'm making it too big of a deal and maybe Laravel developers are professional enough so it's not even a problem. Or maybe you would add something else to that list, a feature that is kind of risky to use. Let's discuss again in the comments. That's it for this time and see you guys in other videos.